All right, hello everyone. I am stoked to see so many of you made it all the way to the end of the conference. I was like, if anyone showed up, I'd be happy. There are more than one person here, so that's excellent. My name is Marcus Helberg. Uh, I'm a nerd. I like coding, and that's why I'm here. So I'm, I'm a really curious person in general. When I see something cool, I want to understand how it works and how can I build something like that. So this talk today is going to be very much the practical part of this conference. It's going to be hands-on coding. Uh, I'm sure that in the past 20 or so sessions that you've been to, you've heard a lot of the basic terms and stuff in slides. We're going to turn all of that into code and we're going to build a little uh, RAG powered application. So we're going to have an application. It's going to access some of our data. It's going to access some of our APIs and it's going to do meaningful things. And hopefully we're going to ma manage to do all of this in the 30 minutes we have allotted for it. So what I'm going to use for this demo is Langchain. We're specifically going to use the Java version of Langchain because I'm a Java developer. I enjoy working with Java. The same concepts will work with any flavor of Langchain. So if you're more Python or JavaScript, just kind of try to translate the code in your head. Um, I'm going to use a framework called Hilla for the orchestration of the front end and the back end. We're going to build a full stack web application here. What it does is it takes a React front end, a Spring Boot back end, and just give us, gives us a really kind of seamless, type safe way of calling the back end. Uh, and that's going to make it really easy for us to, to build this. The app we're going to build looks like this. So we're going to simulate that we're renting cars. And I want to give kind of big uh, credits to the Langchain for j team for this example. I have added the kind of UI part of it, but the idea came from them. And I think it's a really kind of powerful example of how we can put together all of these concepts that we've heard about all like over the past two days into a, an actual working application. So. What I have here on the one side is a live view of my database. So we have some bookings made for different people. And what we have on the other side here is simulating a, a kind of a customer service agent chat that we can chat with. And what we want to do is we want to be able to ask it meaningful questions, like ask it to pull up our reservation details. We want, want to cancel our reservation. And it should then determine whether or not we're within a allowable cancellation window. And if it is, then go ahead and cancel it. If not, just politely tell me, no, that can't be done. Good. All right, so let's get going. My application is, like I mentioned, a Spring Boot application. So we have a kind of source main Java folder here with an application. And on the client, we have a React front end. So we're not going to go too deep into this, but we can kind of see that we have the message list here and we have the grid here. You can see that we're using some of the components in our framework to kind of simplify that. So we have a message list component that's bound to a list of messages uh, up here. And what's really kind of the in interesting part of this whole thing is that when we make a call or kind of send a new message, we're calling this assistant service dot chat method and we subscribe to the response from there. So it's going to start streaming chunks of the response to us, and we are going to append those to the output so that we're getting that kind of chat GPT-like uh, streaming response. The assistant service looks like this. It's a Java class annotated with a browser callable. So that's how we're able to call it here uh, as a method, as opposed to like calling a URL, like you would do if we're calling a REST endpoint or something like that. So that's what we have here. Uh, if I try to interact with this right now, let me um, put this up a little bit and say, hey, it's just going to say, sorry, my brain's not hooked up. So that's our task for today. We need to provide it with a brain that's hopefully functioning even. So for that, I'm going to mostly work within the application class. We're going to configure a whole bunch of these small parts that are going to make up this application. So let's go ahead and start here. So the first thing we need to do is define the model that we want to work with. So the way I'm going to do this is for each thing, I'm going to define a spring bean and then configure how that's going to work. So I'm going to do a new bean, which will be a streaming chat language model. And this streaming chat language model will return a open AI chat language model. And 
Langchain uses a builder pattern for almost everything. So I'm going to kind of complete the build here and then going to go in here and configure things. So one of the things we need for OpenAI is, of course, our API key. I have that in my environment as a variable, so I want to inject it here. So I'll have a string API key here. And the way I'm going to get it from my environment is using the value annotation like this. And we're going to say that we want to have the OpenAI API key like this. All right, so now we have the API key from our environment. We're going to say that we want to use that API key. And we want to use a specific model, GPT-4, because that's a good model to use. So that tells us what model we want to use. All right, next thing we need to do is define how or what tokenizer that model uses, because we need to count some tokens and whatnot. So we're going to define a bean that returns the tokenizer. And that tokenizer will return a new OpenAI tokenizer like this, using the same model. So we're using this tokenizer that's meant for the specific model that we're using. Now, what's pretty cool about uh, Langchain for J is that it works very similar to Spring, where if you've ever used like Spring data, you know that you provide an interface of, say, a JPA repository, and Spring provides you with the implementation. You don't have to like go and type in all the boilerplate. This works very similarly. So we need to provide an interface of how we want to interact with the agent. And we use Langchain for J for actually providing that implementation. So let's do a public uh, interface, interface like this. And we're going to call this our customer support agent. And this interface will just have one method that returns a token stream. Token stream means that we're going to kind of stream the response as it's coming in. And we're going to call this chat. It's going to take in two things. It's going to take in a string, which will be our chat ID. So we keep track of the different chats we're doing. Each one of those will have a separate memory attached to it. And then we'll have the string, which corresponds to the actual user message that we get in. Now, I'm going to annotate these. so. Langchain knows what it is. So this will be the memory ID, keeping track of each chat separately. And this will be the user message, which will get passed in as the user message. We can define a system message, essentially telling the LLM how it should behave, like what is its role. So I'm going to go in here and copy over a message that I have. And we'll just go through it real quick. So what we're telling this specific LLM is like, this is how we want you to behave your customer support agent at a car rental company called Miles of Smiles. Be friendly, helpful. Uh, before kind of booking or, or changing a booking of any way, you need to get the following information. Booking number, first name, last name. And before changing a booking, be sure that the terms of service actually allow that thing to happen. And then finally, we inject today's date because a lot of the calculations on dates require it to know what day it is today, and that's not something that the LLM knows. OK, so we now have a kind of a description of what the interface needs to look like. Now we need to have uh, Langchain actually provide that for us. So what we'll do, again, follow the same thing. We're going to do a bean, and we're going to return a customer support agent here. And in this definition, we're going to start injecting some of those things that we just created. So we'll have the streaming. Uh, streaming chat. Yeah, there we go. Streaming chat language model, and then we'll have the tokenizer like this, and then we'll return what we get from calling the lang chain AI services builder. And the builder needs to get a uh, class. In this case, the interface we want to implement, and then it is a builder again, like everything else that we've used here. So we're essentially saying that we want to have this interface, and we need to give it some inf more information about how it should work. So first of all, it needs to have a language model, which is something that we already configured. So we're going to say, use the streaming chat language model that we uh, created. And then we need to have a way of managing the history of all these chats that we have. So we're going to use a chat memory provider that has a essentially a lambda that takes in a unique ID per chat, and then it provides a memory that corresponds to that. So for that, I'm going to use a token window chat memory. 
which means that I want to have a certain amount of tokens worth of chat uh, in my memory. That's something that I remember th like the first time I built a RAG application, I was I spent like 400 lines of code just trying to count tokens myself. And that was like, I don't know, five months ago. And now I can do this in like a line of code, which is pretty cool. So we're going to say that the ID for this should be the chat ID. And we want to have a maximum of, say, 500 tokens using that GPT-4 tokenizer. Now, what I want to do then is when we have this customer support agent, we can go into our service class here and just replace this, I'm sorry, my brain is not hooked up message with an actual call to our LLM. So the way this works is we are going to create a, uh, a field here for our customer support agent like this. We're going to tell our ID that we want to inject it through our constructor, and then we're going to return it here. Now, Langchain's token stream is not a like plain Java type that Spring understands necessarily. So we're going to convert it into a Flux, which is from the Project Reactor uh, library, which is something that Spring uses internally. So for that, we're going to create a uh, sync, which is a programmatic way of creating a Flux. So we're going to create a sync like this by using the syncs many, uh, sorry, unicast for this and say on back pressure buffer. So this means that if we're getting more messages than we're, we can handle at any time, let's keep track of those. We're not going to drop words in the middle of the sentence. That would not make any kind of sense at all. And then at the end of all of this, we can return what we get from calling the sync as a flux. So really what we need to do here is call this customer support agent and pipe those things between them. So we're going to call our customer support agent. We're going to call the method that we define in the interface. We're going to pass in the chat ID. We're going to pass in, I guess I called it a question here. And then we're just going to say that on the next chunk that comes along, we're going to uh, pass that to the sync try emit next. Then when the stream completes, we're going to get an event and we're going to call sync.tryemit complete. And then finally, if there's an error, we're going to say sync.tryemit error. And finally, we get it started by calling start. Now, if we manage to do things correctly, we might be able to interact with this. So let's see. Hello there. All right, so we can see, uh, can you see the text here in the back? All good? Let's make it a little bit bigger. So we can see that it understands now from that system prompt that it's working at uh, miles of smiles. That's great. Um, now, really kind of a big problem with this is like, if we ask it something very specific about our business, like, let's see if this works, come on. Can you explain the cancellation policy to me, please? Let's see what it answers. All right, so let's see. You can cancel a reservation online by 48 hours before. I mean, all of this seems reasonable, but the problem is that it's in no way grounded <laughs> in, our, in our reality. So if we look at our terms of service, it's like, well, you can cancel it up to seven days prior. So I mean, sounds plausible is completely made up. So that gets us to our next step of our adventure. Like, how do we teach this LLM to like stay within its line? So this is where the retrieval augmented generation comes in, RAG. So we need to take this document, ingest it into a vector database as embeddings, and then use that information to pull in the right uh, information. So who here does not know how vector embeddings work? OK, great. So vector embeddings essentially take a piece of text and convert that, the meaning of the text into a vector, a, essentially a multidimensional array. It works very similarly to how a color picker works. So you can essentially think about, you can take any color in the world and you can get a RGB value for it. That's a three value vector. And intuitively, if you've used a color picker, you know that similar color values have very similar uh, RGB values, very similar idea, just that we're working with text here. 
Now, because we're working with a document, we want to split that into small sections. And the reason we're doing that is that we want to have very kind of uh, specific meanings for all of these embeddings. Otherwise, it's like asking, like, what's the color of this entire painting? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Whereas if we say, what's the color of this, I don't know, house, it's going to be able to say what it is. So likewise, if we say, what's the meaning of this entire document, it doesn't make as much sense as, like, what's the meaning of this specific paragraph? Good. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So for this, we need to, again, define a couple of beans. We're going to have an embedding model. So that's like, how do we convert from text to a vector? This embedding model, we are going to use for this just in-memory ones, but you can kind of plug in any other ones here. So we're going to return, return a new uh, all mini LM. So this is just an in-memory Java uh, embedding engine. You can use any kind of open AI or other embedding model here, but this is a simple one that we can run in our JVM. Likewise, we're going to create a embedding store. So this is the vector store where we start kind of uh, store all of these. So we're going to do a one that uh, has to do with text segments, and we're going to return, return an in Let's see here, new in-memory embedding store. So again, we're using in-memory one. You could use Pinecone. You could use, what's Mary, what's yours called? Astra. Yeah, you could use Astra as well. So you can just plug in basically any, any one. The API stays the same. But for the simplicity of this, we're going to do this. All right, so in order for our agent here to be able to interact with these, we're going to define a retriever, which combines these two into, into one tool. For it. So we're going to define a beam, which is a retriever of text segments called retriever. It'll take in two things. Let me see here. Uh, all right. So it'll take in two things. It'll take in the embedding model, embedding model, embedding store. Let's see that one. Text segment, embedding store. And what this will then return is a uh, embedding store retriever from, and here we pass in a couple of things. So if we look at the parameters, it takes in a store, model, how many results, and what's the minimum score for something to qualify. So we're going to do, what is it, embedding store, embedding model, at least uh, one result, and we want that result to have 0 0.6. So in real life, you're going to play around with the settings for this demo. I happen to know that these are exactly what we need for, <laughs> for today. All right, so good. So once we defined the retriever, we need to tell our, um, our agent here how to use it. So we're going to auto-wire it in here, have our retriever here, and we're going to go into the builder and say that your retriever is this. Now, of course, this would work really great if that vector store we just bound to had data in it, which it doesn't right now. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to do the ingestion essentially turning that text into vectors in the same application. Now, in, in a real life, real world application, you probably don't do that in the same application, like consume and create the vectors. But we're going to do it here just so we can kind of see the full end to end stuff. So I'm going to create a uh, Spring command line runner just so we can run a, a task here. And we're going to say this can be doc to and fittings like this. and. What, we're, what we need in here, we'll need the embedding model so that we can turn text into vectors. We need an embedding store so we can put those vectors somewhere. And we're going to call this our embedding store. We need a tokenizer so we can count tokens. And then we need a resource loader so that we can load some stuff from our class path. This will return a lambda with some arguments and then whatever's in here will get run. So let's go ahead and first get the resource, which corresponds to our terms of service here. So we're going to say resource is equal to loader.getResource, class path, and then it will be terms of service.txt. Then we need to turn that into a langchain document. So I'm going to save our doc is equal to load document. And we're going to import that. And we're going to take the resource and get the file path 
and say, hey, Langchain turned this into a document. Then we need to split it into those small sections, as we said. So we're going to create a splitter. And we can use, again, Langchain here. So we're going to call uh, document splitters.recursive. And say we want to have 100 token chunks of it with no overlap. And again, this is something where you'd like play around with values that uh, work for you. And we give that tokenizer so it knows what a token is for this specific model. When we have those, we can create a ingester. So we'll do a ingester uh, like that. And we'll have embedding store ingester. Again, a builder pattern here. So I'm going to close it and then start configuring it here. So it takes in the embedding model, which we have. Great. It takes in the embedding store so it knows where to store them. It takes in that splitter that we have and then returns an ingester. So once we have this ingester, what we can do is call ingest and just pass in as many documents. So we could say, like, just ingest this entire folder if we wanted to. For now, we just have one document. So that's all we're going to tell it to ingest. So again, now if, if all demo gods are on our side, we should be able to have a more meaningful conversation here. So let's see once this reloads. I just built the project. And let's see if it's able to tell us something more. Hey, can you tell me about the cancellation policy? So let's see. All right. Excellent. So now you can see that it's not giving us some sort of made up story about canceling 48 hours before it's actually telling us exactly what it was in our document with some like additional text because we told it to be nice and polite and, and courteous. So it's doing a pretty good job here. But what's really missing from this in, for it to actually be useful for us in a kind of business setting is that it should be able to access our database with these bookings and be able to kind of pull some information and do something with them. And that's something that we can do with Langchain tools. So for that, I'm going to go into my service package here. I'm going to create a new uh, class. I'm going to call this our booking tools. And this will just be a plain spring component. Let me hide the sidebar here. And what I want to do here is I want to inject my backend service. So I have the plain Spring service class that's very not interesting for this talk. We just want to call methods on it. So we're going to uh, have a private field for our car rental service. We'll call it service. We'll again or inject that to our constructor. And then we're going to create a public uh, method that returns booking details. And we'll call this get booking details. We want to be very kind of descriptive in our naming here because that's going to help the LLM understand what it needs to do with this. So we're going to call get booking details. We're going to pass in three parameters, string booking number, string first name, string last name. And here I'm going to turn on Copilot because I'm a very lazy typer and we're in a hurry. So we're going to return what we get from calling the service with those same bookings. So that's going to go into my database and figure out who this is. It's going to return an exception if that person doesn't exist. Likewise, we're going to have one that, let's see here. All right. That should be a void method. All right. So like that. So we have another method here that cancels the booking again uh, with those informations. The way we make these available to to Langchain is we add a tool annotation here. So it knows that that's a method we can call. Uh, we don't want to give it access to our like entire backend service or anything. We want to be very main mindful. Like These are the only two methods you're allowed to call. And just having those annotations there are, is not going to help us uh, do that yet. What we need to do here is in our agent configuration, we need to go in here and uh, inject our booking tools like this. We need to go into our builder. We're going to say that here is a tool you can use. And if we build this now and things went well, we should be able to have, again, a meaningful conversation with our assistant here. So again, this is a live view of our database. So whenever the 
chat completion completes, it's going to update this. So let's try two different uh, paths here. So the first booking here by John Doe is too close to the cancellation. So it's within that window and we're not allowed to cancel. So let's see if it allows us to do that. Come on. Hi, my name is John Doe. My booking number is 101. Can you please cancel it? All right, so that's gonna. Hmm. So what is going on here? Let's try that again. Has not happened in my trial so far. Hi, my name is John Doe. My booking number is 101. Can you please cancel it? All right, so. I don't know what happened just a moment ago. Things can happen, but uh, what happened right now is what we wanted to happen. So it says like, uh, because your booking is from today until whenever we're not within that seven, like seven days prior, we cannot do it. So that's exactly what we wanted to happen. All right, so let's try the last one here and, and see, we should be able to see this uh, turn into a canceled. Hi, my name is Robert Taylor. My booking number is 105. Can you please cancel it? Let's see if that works. All right. You may cancel up to seven days prior. Would you like me to proceed? Yes, please do. successfully canceled and we can see that that now turned into canceled in our in our database all right that was all that I wanted to show you uh, we had very limited time so if you want to like dig into this on your own time you can find it on my github which is github.com slash Marcus Helberg slash spring boot line chain rag so you can find all the code for this here. Just the only thing you need to make sure that you have before running it is that open AI API key environment variable. I believe I did document that in the readme after a couple of people sent me angry messages telling me it didn't run. <laughs> so uh, go ahead and try it out. Um, I think we have some time for questions. So if you have any questions, anything I can make clear, please ask. Yes, sir. Okay, so the question was, how did it know to call that particular cancel, uh, booking. cancel booking? Yeah, so what this essentially does under the hood is it uses the functions API and open AI. So uh, in this case, we were doing very much just like uh, clear naming of the function was enough to have like a cancel booking name and first name, last name. So it, it understood kind of by us uh, telling it that there's a function with this name that takes in these name parameters, it was able to just figure it out. Yeah. We could we could add annotations to like give much more deep descriptions of what they are and uh, what it should kind of uh, how it should uh, input that data. But this was purely based on uh, convention. I remember you saying that you specifically called it that name because you know you was going to call it based. So if you change that name, it wouldn't have worked then, right? Yeah, I mean, if if I changed that to, I don't know, foo, mm -hmm. it probably would not know like what it was. Then then I would have to like in that tool annotation, God. I would have to tell that this method foo is used for canceling uh, uh, bookings. Okay. In this case. Cool. The second question is, what are these Spring Beans? Are they like enterprise Java beans, session beans that runs in an app server, or uh, why not just make them regular classes or um, functions? Why making beans? What's the benefit of that? Uh, so the benefit of making them beans in this case was just to have them like define one small thing at a time so we could have a discussion. You could just define them as variables and put them together. Uh, the beans in Spring are very similar to enterprise beans in like the Jakarta E stack uh, for sure. The benefit is that you can inject them in different places. So for instance, you remember the tokenizer, we ended up needing that in 
whole bunch of different places. So that way we only d had to define it once and we could use it in several different places. Okay, the whole thing runs in just the same JVM? Or it's not uh, like an app server or anything? No, this is all running in the JVM, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, we have a question back there, I believe. Now let me check. I'm not entirely sure how long we're supposed to go on to. I think we're already over time, maybe. But yeah, go ahead. Sure, so when we created the vectors using the text file data, yeah. is there limitations on that just to be a text file, or can you ingest a larger volume of data through a PDF or Yeah, format? Yeah, so I, I think Langchain supports a whole bunch of different types of documents from like plain text files, markdown, PDF, docx. I think there are kind of plugins you can add or like define your own handlers for different file types, so essentially you could for any types that it supports, or you like tell it how to support, you can just give it a big old like file folder of content and have it just go through that. So typically, the embedding like uh, content to vector creation would probably run like on a build server or something. Like whenever your documentation changes, you go and update the vectors for that documentation. You wouldn't normally do it within the app that consumes them, if that makes sense. Yeah, so, um, but on that note, you made a comment that that data more or less is more effective when it's in bite-sized pieces as represented in that text file. You yeah. have small representations of the data, so it's more clear. Is that correct? Yeah, so you definitely want to chunk up the data, and that's something you probably need to kind of play around with as you're developing the application, figuring out like what's a meaningful, um, what's a meaningful uh, chunk says the recursive splitter that we used will start basically by trying to fit a whole paragraph into a chunk and then it starts to go into like smaller like recursively smaller uh, pieces until it can fit it into a into a, a chunk so if you give it a kind of a meaningfully large uh, size you can do it what I've done for like our documentation we have like a chap that you can use for uh, interacting with our documentation because it's in markdown format. I essentially just took every, I split it by headings because I know those headings are, are sort of meaningful for this. The the size is definitely still. So the question was: Is the size uh, limited by the context window? Uh, certainly. So we always need to be mindful of how much we're sending over to the LLM. So in this case, we. Uh, didn't really pay too much attention of like how much we're sending uh, through this retriever. Uh, the only way where we kind of managed our context was uh, by limiting the size of the history. But I believe the retriever does take in parameters where you can kind of configure how much, like not, not only how many results you want, but like how many tokens worth of results you want at, at most. All right, uh, let's wrap up here. Uh, I'll be around if you want to ask further questions. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around all the way to the end of the conference. I hope you had a good time. Thank you so much for coming, and bye.